This is the cowboy, James Storm, and you're watching Ambi. And if you don't, sorry about your damn luck. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with James Storm. Hello. Uh, I'm great to be here. I, I'm glad that they gave you an upgrade in the uh, in the studio here. <laughs> it's a pretty nice room. We got it's a good place. Sweet. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> we are in Niagara today for CWF, where you are soon stepping into the ring. So how are you feeling about what's about to go down? Uh, I, I feel good. You know, everybody always asks, do do I always still get nervous when I get in the ring? And I always do because it's just butterflies. Like this is something that I love to do. Uh, and to me, if you don't get nervous before you go out there at any time, no matter how many people is out there, then you need to get out of the business because the, the passion's pretty much I've had gone. a lot of wrestlers tell me, if you don't feel nervous walking down that ramp, then maybe you shouldn't be doing it. Maybe exactly. you just don't care much anymore. Yeah, and it actually helps you perform better when you're out there. Like, it's just weird. And, you know, I got uh, friends that play in the, uh, the NFL and stuff, and they say the same thing right before they go through the tunnel. Like all the adrenaline and, you know, they're just butterflies are just going. And it just, just helps you get through everything, so. Well, you have one of my favorite catchphrases, not just from Impact Wrestling, but just in wrestling, and that's sorry about your damn luck. I absolutely <laughs> love that, and apparently that comes from your mom. Yes. Why did that stick with you? Yeah, because uh, growing up, uh, we didn't really have much or whatever, so anytime me and my brother would ask for something, my mom would just say, sorry about your luck. You know, she wouldn't say the damn part because we were like Did five. that come when you got older? Yeah. That, <laughs> you know, and then when they let me start drinking beer and, you know, and uh, and – you know, I just kind of threw the, uh, and, and, and I think it really kind of happened because it was kind of around the attitude era too. So I think I, that's why I kind of threw the dam in there. So. Well, over the years, you've accumulated such an amazing fan base. And the really cool thing is a lot of people send you photographs, whether you're meeting them at an IHOP yes. or in a hardware store. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Where is one of the more bizarre places you have had a fan interaction, though? Uh, <laughs> this is going to be, this is going to be really weird, but, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to name the other guys who were with me, but, uh, we were in a, uh, an adult establishment. Okay. Uh, and this lady <laughs> came up to me and she actually thought I was a uh, macho man. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and she worked at this establishment. <laughs> so she came down and she asked me if I would autograph her. And I did, <laughs> and I signed Nacho Man Randy Savage. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even put Macho Man. I put Nacho Man. Did she notice any of No? I mean, I, I, not that I know of. Like, she left, and she got it tattooed, and <laughs> it's on her. And I, I I remember this. is This is true. And I told Randy this when, when he was, uh, you know, with Impact Wrestling back in the day, and he just – he just laughed so hard. Oh, man. So, and it was so funny. You know, uh, people always talk about, like, my cowboy hat and stuff. And the funny story is I remember t teaming up with Dusty Rhodes. And uh, Dusty Rhodes says, well, hell, boy, if you're going to be a cowboy, you need to wear a cowboy hat. And I was like, hmm, okay. So I got the cowboy hat, and I started wearing it. And then Randy came to TNA. He goes, well, damn, boy, if you're going to be a cowboy wearing a cowboy hat, you got to put a little flash on it. So then that's when I started having them paint it and all this stuff. So stuff's just kind of just accumulated with me over the years. <laughs> like, I was lucky enough to have these guys help me. Yeah. But, you know, funny, you know, it was good enough to tell, be able to go back and tell these guys some of the stories that they kind of helped me yeah. <laughs> run into over the years. <laughs> you had posted something the other day that caught my eye, and it was when people hate on you, it's because you've got something they want. Yeah. What prompted you to post that? I love that. No, it's just, uh, man, it's just so much negative in the world. Like, I, don't, I just don't get it, man. I just don't know how someone can hate another human being that much. Uh, I mean, I, uh, I just, and, and, you know, and you always see these people, like, just hating on people. You, you know, and, and the biggest one that I've always noticed is when people hate on John Cena. Mm -hmm. Like, how you going to hate on this guy who goes and does all these charities and help these yeah, kids right. and stuff like that? Like, even if I, like, hated the guy, like, I, I, don't, I don't know if I could really boo him. <laughs> I saw him. I, I went to Raw or SmackDown earlier in the week last week, and I think I was the only people in that crowd, like, thousands of people strong. I was one of the only Let's Go Cena's, and I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> right. And, and it's just one of those things. And I guarantee you, any one of those people that were booing him would change lives with him in a second. Because they would want what he wants. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just one of the things that I was just like, man, that's like so much people just hate on people just because they have something that they don't. And they're just trying to make them feel bad about themselves. So. I appreciate you sharing that. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I got a little deep on that, no, on that, on that tweet. <laughs> so so some, of, some of the tweets I send out, I'm like, uh, let me say that and just read it again in the morning. <laughs>
<laughs> I like them. For me, it's really motivational. Yeah. So yeah, I always like to send out you know some tweets like that every now and then, just to you know just people are like oh well, he does have a heart. <laughs> It's not just full of Jack Daniels and beer. <laughs> well, it's no secret that you are a country music fan, and your profile photo on Twitter is even the legend Johnny Cash. Yes. So, to you, who is the ultimate country star? Uh, it's it's Johnny Cash. Yeah. I mean, he's just he's the rebel. You, you know, he to me, uh, yeah, I, I was actually lucky enough to meet him uh, about two years before he passed away. Okay, so yeah. it, it, that was like one of the highlights of my life. It was really cool, uh, and uh, and just to I mean. When I heard him speak, I was like, oh, I sure hope God sounds like that. <laughs> you know, no, I mean, it's saying I go there. I mean, please. <laughs> no, I've been doing some good stuff for you. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, it's, and, and to me, like the country music these days, I, I really can't listen to it that much just because it's too too poppy, I guess. You know, it's not like it used to be. Uh, and like I just can't deal with it. <laughs> I'm sure you have your fill of really long drives when you're going from venue to venue, car yes. to car. So, who yeah. are some bands that you listen to while on those long drives? Oh uh, well, uh, I mean, I mean, I listen to some Hanson, some Unskinny Bop, no, uh, Um Um Bop. And actually, I've I've uh, on long drives now. What I've what I've started doing is I'll get on my Insta stories and I ask people what songs. They yeah, like recommendations. Yeah, Perfect. what songs? But then I'll sing them. Ooh, I oh. gotta tune into those. Oh, it's bad. <laughs> This bad. Would you like, say you're a decent singer? Yeah, like I, I mean, like I've even tried to do Mariah Carey. So I mean, I just lip sing every song. That's what she does, right? <laughs> 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 Is there a go-to where you're actually feeling it? And you're like, oh, I might be kind of killing this right now. No, 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 no never no, killing no, it. <laughs> no, I, I don't even sound good drunk. Like, I mean, if other people are drunk, that's when I sound good. Me, no, I just don't. Uh, but I mean, I listen to. Uh, 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 it's, I can't even think of like some of my go-to songs, but uh, it, it's funny because a lot of people don't know that I, I listen to rap actually more than I listen to country it's music. Country. Yeah, because really? I actually grew up in the projects uh, from the age of five to the age of fifteen. So it was me and my brother and two other white guys were the only white people in the whole neighborhood uh, that were. Uh, and then I have pictures of a lot of us on this field uh, behind the projects that where we play football. And one of my best friends, uh, name is Troy Fleming, uh, plays for the Tennessee Titans. Okay. And he grew up with me on the same field. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it, wow. it's just weird. It's crazy. And then we have, uh, there's another guy that was on the field that, that played NBA and stuff. So it's just it's pretty crazy. That's cool. Y'all went into a yeah. little sports field. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> so. For me, when I think of country music, especially to some of the festivals I've been to, uh, it goes hand in hand with drinking. I know you always have things with right. jacks all over your feed, uh, but for me, it's also barbecue. It's kind of a separate route to that. It's some, you that's have to make else. sure you get good barbecue. Yeah, though, yeah. Because there's some crap. There's some barbecue. horrible barbecue joints. Like Memphis has the best barbecue. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever been to Memphis. I have. I went to Memphis to eat barbecue. Yes, and it is. <laughs> I always tell people that are like, "Oh, what's in Nashville?" I'm like, if you ever want to get like, uh, like historic stuff, like go to Memphis. Because you can see where you know Martin Luther King Jr. was shot. You can go to uh, Graceland. You can go to uh, Bill Street downtown. And now they got Jerry Lawler's Hall of Fame down there too, which is pretty cool. Uh, I mean, Memphis has so much history down there, and it, and like you said, the barbecue is just second to none. Well, Straff, things up. Is there anything you would like to leave with your fans who will be viewing? Just any parting words? Oh, uh, God. Uh, no, no departing words. That means I'm going to die. What are you saying here? <laughs> parting words. Not like Is there something I don't know? Like, I swear to God, I was in the ring like two months ago, and these fans started chatting, you still got it. I'm like. I lost it? What? I'm like, <laughs> I'm doing the same crap I did 10 years ago. I'm in parting. I'm still at the same speed I was doing it 10 years ago, which wasn't even fast then. Like, I, so I didn't lose nothing. Not Part, even. Parting words for, from the interview ending, not your career. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I never, I say this for every interview, whether someone's been in the industry for six months or if they've yeah. been around. So I did not Do mean to you have any leaving. departing words? Yeah, ashes to ashes, <laughs> dust to dust. If James Storm wanted to do this interview, he still might be with us. <laughs> Come on. That was quick. <laughs> yeah, see. No, uh, I mean, I always say, you know, it, you know, just follow along with, uh, you know, my crazy life because I, I'm – I'm one of the guys uh, who's lucky enough to come from a very small town, a uh, very uh, poor family, and be able to live my dream 
Uh, and I always tell people, no matter what, no, don't listen to nobody. Do you. Just yeah. just follow your dreams. It's not their dreams. It's not their life to live. God didn't give it to them. God gave it to you for you to do whatever the hell you want to do with it and just do it. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that. They, they keep worrying about all these other people, all this, you know, in their ear and stuff. And don't worry about that shit. So uh, follow me in my crazy journey at James Thornbrand on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, go to sorryaboutyourdamnluck.com to get all the... James Storm merchandise. What? <laughs> That's my gangster. I, I can't even do the W. I have to like. You have to put your hands together yeah, to see? do it. What? West side? I better not do that. Huh? I just want to say thank you so much for joining me today. I hope we don't see you. Wait. Handshake? Well, yeah, right. I hope we don't see you parting soon yes, because I, I, uh, you're kicking ass. Yes, really I, still, I still got a lot of years left in me. <laughs> And remember to everyone viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. We'll see ya. <laughs> <laughs>